Hello, Classic Crew, and welcome to a new series here on my channel. It's called Let's Be Classic, where I'll be interviewing different people and giving you an opportunity to get to know them on a more personal level. I wanted to offer conservative women the same opportunities that women on the left get. Consider Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She was given the opportunity to talk about her skincare and makeup routine on Vogue's YouTube channel. Can you imagine them doing the same thing for any woman on the right? And of course, Michelle Obama was on the cover of Vogue, while Melania Trump, who is a literal model, was not given that same opportunity. But soon, I realized I wanted to be able to offer my followers the chance to hear important ideas from the people who are really outspoken about them. I realized that both men and women needed a place on the internet to get to talk about their philosophies, but also for you to get to meet the people behind the ideas. And now you'll get to meet these fascinating people as they really are. And I'm really excited because that's exactly what we're going to be doing here on Let's Be Classic. If you are interested in seeing more of these interviews, make sure to subscribe to my channel and please consider subscribing to my Substack. Substack is an online platform that allows you to support creators through subscription newsletters. For only $7 a month, you'll have access to a ton of exclusive content from me, including two videos a month specifically for my Substack subscribers, and it'll all come directly to your inbox. So you don't have to try and remember to head over to a website that you don't usually visit. It'll come directly to your email. If you want to know more, I will be linking a video explaining all about Substack up here or here, not sure, and in the description box. But today we are kicking off these interviews with the amazing Amanda Ensing. Amanda Ensing started her career as a beauty YouTuber where she amassed almost one and a half million subscribers. After speaking out publicly about being conservative, she recently made headlines when Sephora pulled a sponsorship from her because of her views. That started the hashtag Boycott Sephora campaign, which is still going strong, and Amanda just recently launched her new podcast, Liberty Before Lipstick. I had an amazing time interviewing Amanda, so I'm really excited to share this with you guys today. So let's get into it. So thank you so much for coming on. I'm so excited that you're here. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm so excited we could connect through everything going on in the world and the political climate. I'm so happy we could connect and do this. Absolutely. And it's so great to have another fellow YouTuber on my channel. I hope that all of my subscribers here, I would love for you to go over and follow Amanda. Amanda Ensing is her name on YouTube, and that's also her name. So make sure to check her out. But my first question for you is, how did you become a beauty influencer? Like, how did you start in this space? Yeah, so I was in college and I was, I majored in political science and business administration. I was getting ready for law school. You know, I'd always loved beauty and fashion, but I grew up in a really small town in Tennessee and I thought, well, how am I ever going to get a job and that no one knows me? So I was getting ready for law school. My mom had always pushed like work hard, go to school, get education. And my junior and senior year of college, I just started digging into learning how to do makeup outside of like powder foundation or like the <laughs> liquid mousse foundation, like, you know, makeup yeah. has advanced so much. So I just started documenting my journey. I said, Hey, I'm going to start learning how to review products. And I had discovered the whole YouTube beauty review community. And I was obsessed with it. I just loved watching makeup reviews. I loved reading beauty blogs. And I thought, I want to do this. I'm interested in like taking pictures, like in the MySpace days, I would always have my brothers like take pictures of me for a new profile picture. Like, I don't know. I just, I loved creating content and pictures and videos. So I started filming. I literally stacked my school books up in front of my window. And if it was sunny, I could film. If not, I had a little lamp. And, you know, in college, like everyone's partying, having fun. And I'm literally like in my apartment, just editing videos. All of my senior year of college classes, I literally, I still got A's and a few B's, but I was always reading like beauty reviews. I was just obsessed. You could not get me away. And I finally found something I was passionate about. And I loved sharing content and doing makeup tutorials. I love that. I mean, I had a very similar experience in that I didn't know how to do a lick of makeup until I was literally in my 20s. I was 21, I think. And I, <laughs> and I, like all I'd ever done before that was the worst kind of makeup, which is 
putting liner on the lash, my lower lash line. Like that was all I did. And that was like, that like was black like, liner. Was it the black liner? It was black liner. That's, that's, and I was like, yes. this is cool. <laughs> This is really hip. That was my, that was the extent of my knowledge as far as makeup. And then I hopped on YouTube and I found a few different YouTubers that I just thought was, was I thought was so cool. I thought of it as art. And then I thought, oh, I can start trying to do this myself. And as I kept watching tutorials, I really taught myself how to do, how to do makeup. And then I just wanted to share that knowledge with other people on my channel when I first started. So yeah. totally makes sense to me. And I, I I mean, it's amazing how, how you've grown. So how did you see your channel grow? Like, what did that feel like? Cause yeah. you have so many subscribers, which is so incredible. Well, when I first started, you know, I used my webcam and I remember I uploaded my first video and I think the first one I uploaded was five steps to a flawless face. And I, it was like primer and foundation. And I was so intrigued by the steps of makeup because before that, the most expensive makeup I'd ever tried was Bare Minerals from like a local boutique. And, yep. <laughs> you know, I had like my Bare Minerals powder, my, I did big winged liner, super intense brows, a lot of bronzer and lip gloss. So <laughs> once I found out primer, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to make a video on this. This is going to change people's lives. And the <laughs> contouring, I was so obsessed with contouring. So I made that video. And whenever I made it, I started sending it to a few friends. I was like, Hey, watch this. I don't, I was just trying to get views. I'm like, watch it. And I'm like, yes, I have five or 10 views. And mm -hmm. for a long time, it was very discouraging because I really, I mean, I loved the beauty community. They were so nice. They were so kind. People grew together. It was a very different scene then when it first started than it is now. The monster that it's become now is so different. But when it first, it was so innocent. Everyone was so nice. And I really just wanted to be friends with everyone. I really was looking for friendship in a community and just sharing my love of makeup and teaching people, like you said, because makeup makes you feel powerful. So when you get it and you love, it, you're like, I've got to share this. I want other people to try this product. Yeah. So I remember not really getting much traction. Um, I just kept uploading because I loved it. And, you know, it turns out like, oh, you know, when, when are people going to find my videos? I just want to chat. I just want some comments. I just want to talk yeah. to people. And I remember the first video that kind of blew up on my channel was a contouring routine. And mm. I almost didn't even upload it. I was like, this is silly. I, I don't know. Like I was doubting it. I'd even like make products disappear in editing to where they like popped on the screen. Like I did all these editing things. So I loved editing. Yeah. And next thing I knew, I was like, wait, 20,000 subscribers, a hundred thousand subscribers. Like what happened? That video was my first video that hit a million views. And I was what? like, this is a video I almost didn't even upload. And I didn't even know you could make money on YouTube. You know, I was just doing this for fun. But when I found out you could make a living, I said, all right, see you law school. I'm going to do what I love to do, which is makeup. That's amazing. I mean, I think that it's so it is really cool how that a lot of these platforms give us an opportunity to become entrepreneurs essentially where you don't have to go to law school where you can stay you know at home doing what you love putting in a ton of work i'm sure because yeah. i know that i do yeah, yeah. <laughs> and st and like still making a, a living that's incredible yeah. so i remember when i first started my channel i tried to focus more on beauty tutorials and on opera singing. Those were my two kind of things. I, I started off as the reason I chose Classically Abbey was for a few different reasons than the name Classically Abbey, classical opera singer, and also just being more classic. That was my, my theme. Um, but I quickly realized that if I shared my political views, if people like, quote unquote, found out that Ben was my brother, Ben Shapiro was my brother, that I would be canceled. Like I just realized very quickly because I saw who else was in the beauty space. And so I made the decision to build my brand on being conservative, which of course has its own set of problems. But <laughs> what was your experience as a beauty influencer when you came out as conservative? Because you had already built up this huge subscriber base. You were already a huge part of the beauty influencer space when you came out as conservative? Yeah, so when I first started speaking about it, you know, to me, I wanted to come from a place of love and a place of unity of like, hey, you know, no matter what people vote for, just love them anyways. And even before I said, hey, I'm conservative, it was already just say you voted for Trump. Like the DM started coming in of, no, we can't just love anyone if they don't vote blue, then, you know, they're racist or, you know, all of these things that the media, that media propaganda pushes. And it was so heartbreaking. And I had sat and watched people with huge platforms who don't know about the political climate, couldn't name one thing Joe Biden has done in 40, whatever years it's been, you know, telling people, oh, 
do this, you know, influencing their audience of people. But yeah. then when you come with a place of love and also, you know, I had facts, I think this is why I'm voting this way. It was just slandered everywhere, you know, and it wasn't just, it wasn't like, oh, hey, um, we, we're not voting for Trump or we're not conservative, let's be friends. It was, hey, let me just attack you personally on every level, you know, when you can't attack the message, you talk to the messenger. And it was just attacking me as a person and t- even people with platforms. I was fine. We were cool. But the moment I said I'm conservative, all of a sudden it was a light switch up. You're racist. You're homophobic. You're a white supremacist. You're not Latin anymore. I mean, overnight, you know, it doesn't even logically make sense. No. But when you are convicted in your beliefs, you really just don't care. And when, I, what I've, when I've seen what's happened in this country and in the influencer space, I saw so many people that kind of was in my circle when I lived in LA and afterwards, they are so disconnected from real life. They don't know what's going on outside of their, their apartment or their house. They really don't. They live this amazing life. They've been able, like you said, to be an entrepreneur and have this amazing lifestyle. But mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people have forgotten where they came from and they're yeah. just so disconnected with the world. They don't know things that are happening at the border. They don't know things that are happening in policy. They just don't know, but they yeah. follow the Hollywood narrative. And I wasn't going to stand for it anymore. I saw people losing their jobs for speaking for their beliefs, people being deplatformed, people being censored, you know. Censorship is a human issue, not a party issue. So I was like, I'm going to use my voice. And I prayed about it. And I just felt like this is what God wanted me to do. I really feel like God gave me my platform for this moment. And like, you know, I'd been doing beauty for so long. And I felt this push of I'm going to be doing something else, but I didn't know what. And then it was almost like a light switch happened last year. And I was like, this is it. Like, I will risk anything and everything for God. I'm going to speak about my beliefs. If not now, then when? Yeah, no, I mean, that's incredible. And I think that I know that for myself, whenever I've started to feel doubt or worry about what I'm doing, as soon as I remember what I'm doing it in service for and that God, again, I have a a similar feeling when I when I speak out on my views you know, it's not easy. It's not that people are coming in and saying, great job, (laughs) you're getting a lot of the opposite reaction. But knowing that God is supporting you really, at least for me, and I, it sounds similar for you, you feel this, it's going to be okay feeling this, it's this peaceful feeling. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you know, when you when, you know, as a Christian, you, you live life by that set of standards, right, the best that you can. And I knew that what I was doing in my heart and praying and discernment, I was like, this is right. So Mm -hmm. for me, you know, it doesn't really matter what any people say. It matters what God says. I'd rather stand with God, be walking out that the best that I can than to stand with the world and then be judged by God. You know, we all will be one day. And Mm -hmm. I've just been so convicted. And and even with things I'm sure we'll talk about later on the interview, you know, when you, when you see God take things that the enemy meant for bad and turn it to good, it's honestly the best feeling because you know, you know, you're very outspoken. And with that, you offend people, they get mad, they come for you. But yeah. honestly, the only way to avoid criticism is to be quiet. And I'm not going to be quiet. And I know you're not going to be quiet. Yeah. No, I mean, that actually reminds me of a, what you just said, reminds me of a quote I, I recently put in my in my newsletter from Abraham Lincoln, where I'm, I'm going to get it a little bit wrong, but something to the effect of someone came to him and said, I hope God is on our side. And Abraham Lincoln said, uh, we don't, I don't, like want God to be on our side. I just need to be on God's side. God, if, yeah, which I I love that phrase. And I love that he said that. Um, But I also actually have a question for you because I really enjoy, I think it's so important the way you talk about how there shouldn't be hate from our side to the, to the left as there is like left to the right. I think that you think that there should be an even playing field in a sense. And so how do you deal with friendships with people who are on the left? Because I have to convince people on the left that, yes, of course I have friends who have differing views than I do, and it doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, you, you care about each other, and that's what, what, what does matter. And I feel often that people on the left can't believe that. They think that because I have strong conservative views, I can't speak to someone on the other side of the aisle, which is antithetical to what I believe. I think it's actually very important to speak to people on the other side of the aisle. So what's been your experience with people who are on the left and your friends who are on the left? Yeah. So when it comes to what you see on social media, like the industry part, most of my friends that were left leaning or everyone in the industry, they all said, no, they they follow that narrative of, oh, well, we don't follow people who aren't on the left. 
Right. So the tolerant are not so tolerant. And look, if you don't want to be tolerant, it's fine, but they should say, Hey, we're not tolerant because I'm sure you've seen it. It's like, Oh, well, we're just not tolerant of racism. And well, when have any of us been racist? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. when it comes to personal, I mean, most of the people near me are all conservative. If mm-hmm. I keep my circle very small, but the acquaintances that I do have that are liberal, I mean, it's fine. We're human. It goes back to, you know, a few years ago, you could vote red or blue and it was fine. It wasn't such a big deal. So even for people, if they're watching this, this interview and this, this show saying like, oh, well, maybe not everyone is so bad. It's kind of like questioning what you're being told. I don't understand the narrative of, oh, well, if you voted red or if you voted for Trump or if you are conservative, you must hate everyone. Yes. You know, when, when have we, I just think it shows the propaganda that's been pushed yeah. and it's very hard for me to understand from a human level. And again, that's one of the reasons why I started to speak out because, you know, even sometimes I would get DMs when I first started speaking out of, I used to really like you, it's sad. And it's kind of like, well, what changed? Yeah. You know what I mean? What, can you tell me what changed? Yeah. And a lot of the things I would have, I love having conversations with people. If people are willing to sit down and have a civil conversation, we would get so far. Because the way I live my life and the standards I live my life is not how you have to live your life, but that's how I am choosing to live my life. It's how I vote. It's how I make my decisions. It's what I believe in. If you don't believe in it, it's fine. But people aren't seeing that the media literally just wants to divide everyone. They want us to be divided because we're weaker. And when you tell people that, they just get mad. And if you tell something different than what their TV says, you're a conspiracy theorist. And it's like, no, we're just questioning what the media is telling you because are we just supposed to obey and, and look at the TV all day and say, yes, this is it. We're not going to question. We're just going to do it. You know, no, we are free thinkers. We are critical thinkers. Absolutely. I, I think that's so true. And I think that at least for me, I think that it's scary that there may be a big portion of the country that thinks anyone who votes red is evil. And if you actually believe that you, the people who vote red are evil, how can we be in one country together? Like that just doesn't, it, it's so divisive and, yeah. and scary. And I think that at least on my side of things, I tend to believe that everyone has the best intentions. It's just that some people don't know exactly what the best thing is or are not educated enough or are taking in that media narrative and just accepting it as fact. But everyone, I think generally, not all the time, but generally people are really just trying to to do what's best. And if we start from that perspective of we're all trying here, then you can actually have a conversation with someone who disagrees with you because we're all trying. (laughs) But if you believe that you have the worst of intentions, then of course that conversation is going absolutely nowhere. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. So one of the things I love about you is that, and your channel, is your faith. Your faith is so important to you. It's something you talk about so openly. You wear your cross all the time. It's beautiful. And as as a religious Jew myself, I love seeing other public women sharing their faith. And I think it's so important, especially people who are living a generally normal life. You know, someone you can look at and say, oh, they're not totally different than I am. They're pretty much living the same life that I am. They just believe in God. So can you talk about your faith? and what it means to you and how it informs your life? Yeah, I would love to. So I grew up Catholic and I always went to church, always prayed, but I didn't really like going to church. You know, I kind of thought church was something older people did and you're young, you're a teenager and then you grow up. And um, it wasn't until actually after I started my YouTube channel and I went through a really bad breakup and it was devastating. It was my first relationship. And I didn't really know where to go. So I said, well, I guess I'm, and I was an adult living on my own. And I said, well, I'm going to start going to church again by myself. You know, I wasn't, I was kind of only going on holidays. I was young and, you know, anyways. So I started going to church again and I just started giving everything to Jesus. You know, I lived by myself. It was me and my dog. Not when you go through heartbreak, I don't wish that on anyone. It's the hardest thing to go through. It just, you know, you, you almost feel numb to everything. And yeah. that's why I started building my faith again. And I'm Christian now. Um, I just go to a Christian church. But mm-hmm. I just started looking for something to fill my heart that nothing in this world could offer me. And that's how I started finding Jesus and really finding Jesus. Because I had known God my entire life. I was a Christian, my entire, a Catholic Christian my entire life. And I prayed all the time. But knowing Jesus and knowing Jesus were two different experiences for me. Yeah. 
when I started submitting my life and, you know, it's almost like you take off the rose colored glasses and you're like, oh, wow. And, you know, being a Christian is not easy. I think giving your life to God is harder than going through life, doing whatever you want. I mean, most of us, we just do whatever you want. But when you get that eternal peace that your faith gives you and it gives you something to serve and something to live for and like, you know, the earth, you know, I believe this isn't our home, right? Heaven is our home. So mm-hmm. this is just our passing place. And for me being a Christian, if I'm to believe God is the one true God, like our mission is to spread the gospel and to make heaven crowded. So I thought, why hide it? And when I first started speaking up about it, I was terrified because yeah. it was one of those things where you don't talk about faith or politics. And now I can't stand when people say that, but you know, at the time yeah. I thought, you know what, God gave me this platform without me speaking about him. So I started kind of softly sprinkling things in of like, I don't want, at the time I was like, I don't want to offend anyone. Now I don't care. But then I was like, I don't want to offend anyone. I just want to come from a good place. Mm -hmm. And so I started, and to be honest, I don't really ever get hate about it. However, I noticed with everything happening now in the political climate, people always try to bring Trump in it because they're obsessed with Trump or people try to say, oh, well, why are you wearing a bikini in this picture? Like, I thought you were a Christian. But people that say those kinds of things, and I'm sure, you know, if you've experienced similar comments of, oh, well, why do you do this? Yes. Because you're faith, you know? So when people say that, those aren't people who really know the God that I know. You know, mm-hmm. we all mess up. We all make mistakes. And like you said, we should be showing people grace. Um, yes. And this can it reminds me of cancel culture because, you know, they tried to cancel Jesus and look what happened. He wrote, he rose from the dead. So yeah. this whole cancel culture, you know, if he was hated, we know that we'll be hated. So mm-hmm. I'm okay with it. But it's just when you see people in your messages, and I'm sure you get them of, oh, you know, I started praying, I started looking up, the, reading the Bible, like, those are the best things you can receive. Because yeah. that's so much bigger than makeup. It's so much bigger than politics, it's bigger than anything in this world. And it's the best feeling. So I'm very bold and open about it, because you don't have to believe it, but just what I believe. So I'm gonna share my beliefs. And that's the beauty, right? We all get our God given voice to talk about whatever we want to talk about. Mm-hmm. I love giving women and any followers just the the strength to talk about their faith because I think talking about faith in today's kind of environment is really hard and it's it can feel um, lonely to talk about faith yeah. and I I'm so happy like I mentioned to see more public women talking about their faith so that other women feel. Com- confident talking about their faith and and maybe even re-exploring their faith. And I think one of the things that you mentioned, which is so important, I had my own faith journey, and it's something I'm very open about, where I struggled with my faith. Um, I kind of had the opposite situation to you, where I dated a couple of bad guys who called themselves Jewish, but really weren't practicing Jews, and in the sense that they didn't they didn't take the the moral aspects of Judaism and like their belief in God seriously. They just kind of practiced certain traditions and laws, but didn't take it into their hearts. And it pushed me away from my faith. And re-exploring and rediscovering my faith has been so special and important to me because I did have that journey. And it's not to say that everyone should have a walk away from faith, but it means that when you do, it's there's something very sweet about coming back because you've kind of seen what it's like without it. And now you recognize how informed, like how much better your life is with God and with faith. So I think it's, I think that's really important to mention. And I really also want to talk about, you're talking about, I think it's really important to share the mistakes that we've made and maybe things that we've done in the past that we regret, because I think People who want to judge people of faith make it, they want to make it seem that we are perfect and that we believe that we are perfect. Instead of saying, we all have temptations, we all have sinned, and we, that makes it, that's just part of the journey. <laughs> and it makes it more relatable to other, to other women of faith to say, no, we, we've had these same struggles. That doesn't, just because you've had struggles doesn't invalidate where you are with your faith now. Is is that your feeling too? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think growing up, something that kind of pushed me away from faith sometimes was seeing that cookie cutter Christian of they're perfect, they have a perfect family. You know, I would see that and I'm like, but that's not me. I can't yeah. relate to that. And even on social media, you know, people tend to post their highlights. I mean, we've gone into this realm now of people being vulnerable and raw and truth and it's amazing. But 
up until this point, and there still are some where people are just want to be perfect because I think it stems from a, a human heart thing. You know, we all want, Jesus was the only one that was perfect and we, we want to be that we want to be like him. So I think whether people realize it or not, they're striving towards that perfection because of our creator. I just mm-hmm. thought of that now, but I, like um, I think that when you see people on Instagram, let's say that have verses everywhere and the perfect family, amazing, great role model, but that's only such a small portion of someone's life. So for me, if you're like, for example, if you want to judge me because of pictures I posted or things I said or did great, you know, that's on you. But when you have your faith, you know that, like you said, we aren't perfect. And I think it's more relatable to see someone and to watch them, whether they go back and forth, whether they have come from somewhere and be like, wow, she's a Christian and look what she went through because Christian Christianity, faith, Judaism, you know, it's not just for a certain type of person. It's not just for, oh, well, if you've never had any mistakes, then you can have faith. That's life. And I think that people are just, they just tend to judge. And I think it's just a human heart issue of we just judge and we try to nitpick and distract from our own lives. Yeah. But none of us are perfect. You know, that's, that's the journey. And I think people have to stop trying to hold other people to perfection and just start looking inward to themselves. I think it's just a reflection of themselves when they try to project that onto people. Yeah. No, it's something I had to, I wanted to share really openly on my channel, not just from a perspective of my own faith, but also from the perspective of being classic. That's something I espouse on my channel a lot. And I wanted to say being classic doesn't mean that I'm perfect. There are days that I am wearing no makeup at all. My hair hasn't been brushed. I haven't gotten out of my robe and things are just not going the way I planned. But that doesn't mean that Classic doesn't mean perfect. It just means aiming to be better. And in the same way, with faith, we're always trying to aspire to grow in our faith and to do our best. But that doesn't mean you're always at that perfect level because otherwise there's nowhere to go. And that's what life is all about, is moving toward God. So I wanted to talk about Esther. And I know you talked about Esther and how you felt pulled to speak on your beliefs and your faith in the same way that Esther defended her nation and her people. And Esther is one of my absolute favorite books. I actually recently did a video on my channel all about biblical women who I absolutely love for their strength and who I find so inspiring. Um, And I I loved making that video because it was also for me uh, saying, Don't look at the, if you tell me that the Bible is patriarchal, look at these women. (laughs) That was my, that was my kind of point there. But are there any women in the Bible besides Esther who you find strength in? Yeah, I mean, Esther was the, the first one that I really started talking about because I had heard of the book of Esther, but it really wasn't until the last year or so that I started diving deeper into my Bible. You know, when I lived before a year ago, when I moved to Nashville, when I was in LA, I went through a spiritual drought. We were going to church, I was praying, but I felt so weighed over, like heavy all the time. So when I moved back here, I started kind of digging back deeper into my faith, reevaluating, like, how am I walking with Jesus? And I have an Esther highlight on my Instagram, if anyone ever wants to go check it out. But I left that there because it started with a friend saying, hey, remember the book of Esther? And I kind of thought, hmm, yeah, kind of. But all I knew that she was beautiful. I I had never read the book of Esther. So when I went through and read it, and it's funny because right before I went to, I was getting ready to film my What's Next in America video, which was my first video speaking out. So when I was talking to this girl on the phone, and then I said, what if God gave me my platform for such a time as this? I had no idea that was a, a scripture from the Bible. Like I had no idea. And then when I was reading, I was like Esther 414 and I'm reading online and I'm like, oh my God, like it was almost like God had just pinged it right to my brain. And I always think about that moment. And since then, it's funny that you mentioned Esther because I see Esther everywhere now. Like I see all kinds of spiritual leaders and women and men speaking about Esther when I never saw it anyway. Um, But I think Esther is my favorite just because of my experience that I've gone through with Esther and reading about the book of Esther. And the thing I love about Esther is that You know, her beauty is what captivated the king, but her courage and her voice is what saved her people. So Esther is just my favorite. Oh my gosh. I I love the story of Esther. It's near and dear to my heart. (laughs) Um, We read it every... Who's my favorite? I love... So who did I talk about on my channel? I mean... Yeah, Yael and Yehudit. So Judith and Yael. I don't know. I think Yael is just Yael in in English. I know all of the names in Hebrew, and so it's sometimes hard for me to to translate them. But um, she was 
amazing. I mean, Yael was the woman in the Bible who she killed Sisera, who was one of the major um, Canaanite uh, uh, um, generals. And she like invited him into her tent to help the Jews because she knew that the Jews had been incredibly um, uh, oppressed by the Canaan people. And so she actually drove a stake through his temple. Like she's just the strongest woman. Like, yeah, she was like, get out of here. This is done. And she gets half the credit for basically like winning the wars in Canaan. It's amazing. And this is why I love the Bible, because it's like you look at these women and no one is saying women aren't strong. You look at Devorah, Deborah. She was an incredible judge. She was a warrior and she was defending the nation of Israel. Like it's incre it's so cool. And you think to yourself, how do people look at the Bible and think that women are are secondary? Cuz they're not. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's like you can you can get whatever you want from the Bible if you're going in with a certain perspective, I suppose, and that's sad cuz if you really read it with an open mind, it's like the women in the Bible are so strong and there's so much for us to learn. I I love it. Um, I was wondering if you could give us the story, and of course, I'm sure we've all heard it, but I'd love to hear it again just to have it on record here for this interview for anyone who hasn't, um, your controversy with Sephora. Yeah, sure. So I'll give you the in a nutshell version. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I have worked with Sephora before, and as you know, working with brands, they usually work through other agencies. So I've been very vocal on my conservative views and, you know, my faith and everything. And I got an email from Reward Style saying that Sephora would love to work with you. And at first I was like, wow, you know, with all everything happening in the country, conservatives that are open, you know, aren't really getting sponsorships because of, you know, our, the beauty industry is very liberal leaning. And I thought, mm -hmm. wow, this is great. And so I let them know, I went through the contract and I said, hey, I get heat for my conservative and Christian values and this political climate. I went on and on and on. And I referenced it to a clause that said that they could pull out of the contract, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I posted all this in my original Instagram video on IGTV about it. Uh, people want to see all the, all the tea, all the tea, all the Absolutely. details. But yeah. um, in there, you know, they said, no, don't worry. We don't discriminate. So I did the video. It was on skincare. You know, I talked about how I had enjoyed Sephora. I actually worked at a Sephora retail store and I had a not so great experience working there. This was when I first started my YouTube channel. And that's, I have that video up on my YouTube. So, you know, I've had my experiences, but I never had any issues before with my other sponsorships and, you know, nothing changed. I've always been the same person. So the video goes up, some people hate on their page and Sephora, I think they have, they have millions of followers, 20 million plus, I don't remember, but they have a lot of followers. They don't get a lot of comments. So I guess it was a shock to them to get a few comments. And one person said, uh, I don't like Sephora anyways, but after sponsoring Amanda and being part of a dangerous MAGA group, I'm out. And so for a response, and so it went viral and they, you know, said that I didn't fit with their values of inclusivity and all, you know, all these things you can see on my story. So Sephora basically commented to some, which, what does a MAGA, dangerous MAGA group even mean? You know, MAGA make America great again. Like, what does that even mean? Anyways, yeah. so they directly started responding to a comment like that one about my conservative views and blasting me. You know, this is a private issue. If you had an issue with me, you could email me. So I start getting blown up from the word style on, hey, we need you to remove the video. We need you to remove the video. And on my YouTube channel, the comments were good. It was like, wow, I'm so happy to see Sephora is working with someone that's conservative. You know, it was very open and they wouldn't give me a reason why. And we're, we're suing them now. So I've talked about that. We're le legally pursuing action now. And it's just crazy that they still never gave me an, any reason why. Right? They just referenced that clause of what, that I initially had an issue with. So a few days later, they, every couple of days, they would come up with something different of why they disaffiliated, you know, like they were digging for what, how can we smear her? They were responding to like left leaning fake news, in my opinion, like business insider and all these thoughts that are just never, never report anything that doesn't go with their narrative. And they started lying about me. They started putting me in their chats, in their emails, in their corporate emails, like all of these things they started putting me in saying, Amanda made light of death at the Capitol. Never would I ever, never had I ever. So everything they did, and I started calling them out like, hey, I've got timestamps. Hey, what are you referring to? And they would never say what content I did because they know that it's a lie. 
right. when you have a big company like that smearing someone like me with a platform, what have they done to other people? And I mean, I've had an influx of emails and messages of people telling me things that Sephora has done. And yeah. when you read it, you're like, how is this? This is all happening behind closed doors. So I'm glad that God picked it up and he started doing his thing and spreading it everywhere because this is serious. Like when did makeup become political? All they yeah. had to say was, hey, you know what? We respect people with different values and beliefs or whatever, or not respond and reach out to me. We could have talked about it, but they took their platform. And you know how so many makeup brands when they work with influencers or in Sephora, what brand would want to work with me now? You know, they're going to pick Sephora. But yeah. they literally said, and there were thousands and still to this day, thousands of people commenting, canceling their Sephora account. Sephora is quiet. They're only responding to brands that are in their store and people that are agreeing with their, with their left narrative. They literally said, we don't want conservative dollars. Their silence spoke volumes. Oh my gosh. It's, it's so crazy to me from one comment essentially. And I had a similar experience. I don't know if you, I think I told you about this actually before we, we scheduled this where I had sp- I had a sponsorship lined up for six months and I put out a video. They, they again, they worked through a, another platform to, um, to s- schedule the sponsorship. And I sent them the video in advance. I sent it to them and I said, let me know if this is good, if you're okay with it. And they checked it, they said it was fine. And then they got two, three comments. They wrote me an email and said, we have to cancel the sponsorship. The, for the rest of the sponsorship and please take it down this video. So I give you a reason or no. Oh, they, they told me explicitly that people were not happy with what I had said. So they, they explicitly said that it was because I was conservative. It's not your problem and it's not the brand's problem. So does that mean that if I'm offended, I can go comment on any brand's page of any creator, any influencer and tell them that it's not okay. And they're going to, so we won't have any sponsorships then because every influencer that's ever created a sponsorship has offended someone. Exactly. Well, the craziest thing was I, after this happened, I went on YouTube and I searched this sponsor and I searched their ads that they've paid for. They've paid for ads on the channel of someone who made a hate video about me. Oh. So I was like, they, and they actually sponsored a specific video that was incredibly like left with the ideas and very critical of conservatives. And I was thinking to myself, this is indicative that you can get away with pretty much anything if you're on the other side of the aisle and a sponsor is, you know, they feel totally comfortable doing that, especially because let's be honest, most of the time conservatives are not going to go out and send an email to that company and say, we're offended. We don't want you to sponsor this creator. Like that doesn't, we believe in freedom of speech. Correct. Correct. And so there's just like a totally different so, pl- things play out totally different on the other side of the aisle. And I just I thought, to to my, yeah. And I thought to myself, that's, that's so crazy that they had to take down my video where I, um, s- my videos are, I'm very clear about what I do. Like it's very clear that I'm conservative yeah. and they chose to work with me day one and day two, they, they, they asked me to take it down. It was, it was so silly. And my thought about that is, what do you think we can do as openly conservative women in an increasingly woke world? So from the perspective of some people like you and me, what do we do when we're not able to get sponsors? And from the perspective of women who aren't in our line of work, who are just trying to navigate <laughs> this kind of world and figure out what, how they fit in and how, how they can live in it. Well, firstly, from the perspective of if you have been creating, you know, it's your job or you, you do sponsorships like you and I, I think it's a huge opportunity to stop relying on brands and start, start betting on yourself. Yeah. Because, you know, me as a creator working with brands, you know, usually making your money, most of your money usually comes from sponsorships because, you know, YouTube views, it's just a whole mess with YouTube. And, you know, usually you get these marketing, these deals with these brands and you're promoting their products. So that's usually where a lot of creators get their bulk of money. If they don't have their own brand, their own products, et cetera. Yeah. So I think it's a huge opportunity to start investing in yourself, start creating your own products, creating your own brands, and also start working with smaller brands that maybe they don't have the budget. Maybe they have affiliate programs. Maybe that can benefit, but stop giving your time and your voice and your likeness to brands that don't want us that aren't inclusive. And yeah. I think there's been a huge wake up in the, in the nation 
of people saying, okay, well, we don't have Disney Plus, we don't have Sephora, you know, looking at all these brands that are trying to cancel voices and conservative voices. I mean, canceling any voice. If what happened to me would have happened to a liberal influencer, I would have spoken up. None Excellent. of them spoke up for me. And that speaks volumes. Most yeah. of these people only care about money. And the moment that cancel culture comes from the, for them, they're going to complain about it. But we try to tell them because they might come for us now, but they will come for anyone and everyone eventually. So yeah. I think that for people that are trying to break into this space, you shouldn't have to be quiet and be not be who you are just to get sponsorships. I would rather be myself, be vocal, be truly me and know what brands want to work with me than working with brands, knowing that they don't want me, knowing they don't believe in my views, knowing they discriminate against my views. I would, I don't want that money. To me, that's dirty money. I don't want it. And to see, like you said, I, there were so many influencers that threatened violence against me, death threats, talking about my faith, talking about my ethnicity, all of these things being racist. They're fine. They're still working with brands like Sephora because it fits their narrative. Yeah. They can support the riots and, and the shootings and everything that happens with BLM and Antifa. It's fine. They, yeah. it, it's fine because it fits the narrative, right? It fits what Hollywood and what the media is pushing. And if you question that, they look at you like, oh, no, get back in line. Be quiet. And I'm not willing to do that. You're not willing to do that. And I think we're seeing a rise. Like Conservatives are no longer silent. And I see this shift coming. I think there are a ton of conservative brands coming. I think a lot of conservative voices are trying to speak up. Like We're not going anywhere. Our values cannot be moved. So I think in the ever woke world, the best way to combat it is to stand up. Because if everyone stood up, what are they going to do? Yeah. It's only when people are quiet that they can push people around. But conservatives need to start creating their own verticals, their own shows, podcast channels. Put it out there. Because I guarantee you, if you're someone listening and you've wanted to start, but you're afraid or you don't know, there are more people than you think. And people can hate Trump all day, all, all they want. But if his rally showed us anything, it's that we're the majority. And I don't say that in a vindictive way. I say the media wants us to feel like we're alone. Like you said, you feel isolated. You feel alienated. You feel like, oh, my gosh, no one has the same values that I do. There are millions of people that have the same values that you do. And I think people are craving that authenticity and just craving people to relate to you. You and I connected because of what happened. Amazing. You know, now it's like we now we have we're friends like you have a friend. I have a friend. Mm-hmm. And that's only because of something that, that the enemy tried to use for bad. Yeah. So now, you know, speaking up, if I wouldn't have spoken up, maybe you wouldn't have talked. So people yeah. need to start using their voices and speaking up for what they believe in and not be afraid. I mean, no one like cancel. They can't cancel you. They can't silence you. Like you can keep posting content. What What are they going to do? Okay. You post Megan Charles and you're conservative. What are they going to do? Hate? it's fine. Don't be afraid yeah. of other people. People can't be afraid. They need to just stand up. I think that's such good advice. And I I think that my perspective on things is definitely changing as things are getting more and more divisive because earlier in my channel, I would say maybe even eight months ago, I was saying that, you know, depending on the situation, be quiet, like don't necessarily speak out. And as I'm getting more, being more in this woke world and understanding what this all means, I'm starting to realize, no, the the more quiet you are, the more isolated and alienated you feel and the less we can do as a group because we don't know who else is part of is part of the group. You don't know the woman across from you in your psych class is conservative. You have no idea. You have no idea that the woman in your office who you've shared a desk with <laughs> it maybe shares the same views as you do or is at least open to talking. And that's something I think is, it's, it's, it's a loss. You miss out on a community of people who can support you and who can actually give you the strength and the boost and the moral support that we all need to stand up for what's right. Agreed. So I was, I asked you this a little bit more before, but I guess we can touch on it a little bit. Have you lost not only you know, sponsorships and people in your influencer community, but friends as you've become more openly conservative? And how have you dealt with that? Yeah, I mean, in the influencer space, it was a mess. I had a lot of people unfollow me and I had unfollowed a few people. You know, I got into a point as I started speaking up and right before where I started seeing people literally post things like, if you if you are dating someone that votes for Trump, they're a bad person, you should dump them mocking Trump, like all of these really ugly things. And I was like, 
I can't do this. And then on the day of election, I remember posting like, hey guys, you know, get out and vote, like pray, like just really, I didn't tell people who to vote for. I didn't tell people who I, who I voted for. I'm sure people kind of knew, but I just said, educate yourself, go vote, love everyone. Let's, let's be together. And I just remember influencers saying, if you voted for Trump, unfollow me. Like just in general, not saying that to anyone, just in general on their public platforms. Disgusting. Awful. Disgusting, right? Yeah. And so when I started seeing that, I was like, I cannot be around. Like I am a tolerant person. I've never judged someone for other views. But, you know, going back to what you were saying earlier about losing people, if you speak up and someone doesn't want to be around you because of reviews, that's on them. Let them expose themselves. I've never judged anyone. So that's your choice. It's completely fine, but know that you made that choice. Um, so in the influencer space, it was like, I lost a group of people, but I gained amazing people such as you, other people that I've met that are just the best, kindest people I've ever met in my life. You know, I never expected the support that I got from the people and creators that were never even on my radar because I was, you know, in this circle of people from when I lived in LA, none of them ever supported me. None of them ever truly cared about me. There were so many things that happened behind closed doors that maybe yeah. people will never know about. And I mean, I held hands and prayed with some of these influencers. I prayed for them. I prayed over them. I helped them anyway. I stood by them when they went through their scandals. And the moment it's not popular and they think they're going to lose some money, it's fine. But that showed them. And I'm the type of person like, I pay very close attention when God removes people from my life. And it was yeah. a wake up call. Yeah. In my personal life, I have a very small circle of friends. And there definitely have been a few people where we're just not really talking anymore. And these are even people that, that are my friends or that I thought were my friends that are conservative, that don't think anything else is happening in our nation, right? They just think, oh, well, the election is what it is. Just right. forget about it. Let's unite. You know, it's historic. We have a woman in, in, the, in the White House. And I'm like, you're not looking at everything that's happening. Like, even with the whole Kamala thing, right? Yeah. She doesn't represent me as a woman. No. Like, you have a white man came and swooped her up because of her skin color. That doesn't represent me. I want to be yeah. getting my job because of I'm worth it, because of my talent, because of my hard hard work and work ethic. I don't want someone to pick me because I'm a woman or because I'm Latina. I don't want that, you know? We're all yeah. people. And Absolutely. when I think as you start speaking out, like you said, even people that I thought were my friends, just silent. And it's very hurtful. I think it just hurts because you can be there for people. And then when it comes time where you need them and they're not there, I think silence speaks volumes. But mm -hmm. like I said earlier, when you're convicted and you know you're walking your path and you're walking with God, you're just not moved. Like I've had this bubble of peace where I'm like, it is what it is. The people that are meant to be in my life will be there and I've been at peace with it. Yeah, no, I think that's all really very true. And I think it, you mentioned this earlier and it stood out to me that People act as if finding out the fact that you're conservative has changed who you fundamentally are when they've been friends with you for years and know you and know who you are. And then all of a sudden, simply knowing this one fact, they feel justified in not being your friend anymore. And nothing has changed. Nothing has changed at all. And it's just that one word, that one idea has given them permission to call you, like you said, racist, homophobe, all of these other slurs that are based on absolutely nothing. And it's really upsetting because it makes those friendships that you felt were strong break. And it is hard. And I, I try to say this to, to the people I know and love and also to my, to my followers and subscribers that it's hard, but it's a blessing in disguise because at some point that person would not have been the friend that you thought they were and if they were revealed in this moment, as opposed to some time that hope that may have been even harder for you to take, then you aren't depending on someone who you really can't depend on. Yep, I agree. Yep. Yeah. So being on social media, you've always you're always going to have haters and hate comments. I'm sure you had that even before you were openly conservative. But has that changed or increased since being openly conservative? I'm sure the answer is yes, but I, I have to ask. And how have you dealt with that overwhelming negativity? Do, you know, we have God to lean on, but it doesn't always make it easy. So I'm curious to know how, how you've handled that. You might be surprised by my answer because I, I've always gotten hate on my YouTube, whether it was for the way I looked or the way I did makeup, like silly things. Like people can be very opinionated about makeup. Like 
your eyebrows look bad, go die. And I'm like, it's just eyebrows. Like, okay, anyways. <laughs> so when it came to this, I thought it was scary. It was scary at first. I'm like, okay, they're going to start criticizing what I say. Um, you know, it's scary when you first start speaking out. But when I first did, I mean, that was the most hate I ever received in my life was yeah. when I made my first YouTube video. And I was like, oh my gosh, people are so blinded right now by hate, by propaganda that like when I was reading some things, like I could not believe people were saying these types of things. And, you know, after that, I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I just, I got to keep going. So my whole thing when I first started was I'm going to interact with people that are being kind. And if I, I can have conversation, I will. But I think always my, my motto on social media is you can't let other people's opinions distract you too much and get into your head because then it tells you who you are instead of listening to who God says you are. And I know people in the influencer space who will sit and read comments all day and hate comments and sit and cry in bed for a week. They get depressed over it, you know, mentally, social media can be very difficult. Yeah. So I just kept going, kept doing like, you know, what you say is on you, I'm going to keep going. And when things started t turning for the better, you know, people eventually got over it and they unfollow and, you know, people who have the same values would follow or people who were tolerant would follow. When the whole Sephora thing happened and, you know, that was the most vocal, I was like, this is not okay. And I think it struck a chord with millions of conservatives that were like, I've gone through this too on some level. Yeah, I've had someone at work who no longer talks to me. I've lost my job. I've had to leave a job. I had people emailing me that they were quitting Sephora because they're like, me and all the conservatives want to quit. We're trying to find a job. I mean, this struck a chord with people because you're fundamentally saying your conservative beliefs do not fit in with us. That's what all of these companies and people and influencers that are saying are saying, we don't want you here. Yeah. And so now I feel like I don't, I feel like it's mainly love, to be honest. Like, I feel like the tides have turned. And I knew at some point it would because of my faith in God. I knew at some point, whatever God wanted me to do, he would do it for his benefit and for the good of his people. So I knew no matter what, at some point, something would happen. I've, I've always had that like weird gut feeling of, like you said, it's going to be okay. It's yeah. going to be okay. Like you just got to stick through the storm, focus on God, not the storm. Like it's going to be okay. So now, you know, I'm, I'm very vocal and I keep going. And I also looked at people like Candace Owens that are very vocal, you know, I look up to people like that as well, because even if you don't agree with everything she says, uh, I mean, I love her strength. I love her courage just to speak and say a lot of things a lot of people want to say and just don't have the courage to say. I think she's inspired women and men to speak up and start speaking about their conservative values. But I thought of that and I remember people like her that I would watch and I would see the hate they get. And I'm like, this is nuts. You know, like, yeah. I hope she keeps going and she doesn't care. And so I had that same kind of mentality, even Trump, you know. He would just say the truth and people didn't like it or they didn't like the way he delivered it. But it was the truth. For the first time, we had a president telling us the truth. You never had to worry what or wonder what he was thinking. You know, he wasn't sitting up there with a graceful speech and then stabbing us in the back in government. Yeah. So for me, it's like the truth far outweighs any hate. I'm just at a point now where I, I don't know. I, it has to be God because I've just had a bubble of peace. I just don't care. <laughs> like I genuinely don't care. And I, I said I would risk anything and everything for God. And I feel like, as the whole beauty community tried to come for me. I mean, what, what else can I lose? I already lost that circle, which is fine. It doesn't phase me at all, but it's like, I feel truly free now. Like I can just be me. And like, you know where I stand. If you come to my page, you know where I stand. And if you don't like it, it's fine, but I'm not going to change for anybody. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that that's amazing. And I think that as somebody who people know, I get a, an inordinate amount of hate <laughs> on my channel. And my husband is always saying to me that he he's so impressed that I don't that I don't like take it in. But I feel similarly to you that it's when you're taking a a stand that needs to be taken and you're standing up for people, not just yourself, you're standing up for others. It's like those other things just kind of ping off. It's you, you have that shield of like God is supporting you and you know you're doing the right thing and you can very easily see, at least in my, in for, in my opinion, I can see the pain in people who are, who are writing hateful things. That that's not something a happy person does. And so, I don't look at that person. Have you ever done that? I haven't done those things. I've never done that. I've never even had the impulse. <laughs> And so it's just kind of like I look at these these horrible things that people write and I think to myself either you have way too much time on your hands, you don't have enough going on and you're very unhappy because that's not something a happy person does. And if that's the case, I 
those are not the, generally, those are not the opinions of people I trust, people who <laughs> are going to be. Well, I have to respect you in order to want your opinion in the first place. And I think people don't understand that. Like, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just saying, if I don't know you or respect you, why would I care what you say? And I think with the whole cancel culture and everything that the media pushes with hate, they want to try to like encourage bullying to let's hold people accountable. Let's, let's hold them accountable for that tweet 10 years ago. Like we need to cancel them. They need to apologize. They need to bow down to the mob. Not going to happen with me. And it makes people upset because when you can't be controlled, it pisses people off. But yes. it's like, I, you know, I'm like, please people stop apologizing unless you genuinely felt like you need to apologize and you did something wrong, but still who are these people to judge us? And that also comes from a Christian and, and a faith standpoint of why, who are you to judge me anyways? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I've never had the impulse either to just comment and say, oh, you know, hateful things or to go to people's page. You don't pay attention to things you hate. That's just a fact. So when people yeah. come to your page and they thumbs down every video and they comment mean stuff, they're a fan. They're confused, but they're a fan. Like if I go to a restaurant, do you think I'm going to look at the food I don't like? No, I'm going to look at the food I like and concentrate on that. You know, you just ignore yeah. things that you don't want but they like you. They're interested. They just, I mean, I, I just think they're confused or hurting and it makes me sad. It truly yeah. makes me sad that these people are so sad or don't have enough going on. Like put that energy into yourself, into your life, into your family. Yeah. And I think that your point about cancel culture, I think is important in that cancel culture isn't looking for an apology because even after you apologize, you've already been canceled. So Never exactly. Cancel culture. This is my issue Obviously, there are, it, cancel culture is wrong and bad, and it doesn't allow for mistakes and for freedom of speech, depending on what the, the situation is. And in Judaism, we have a concept of teshuva, which is repentance, which is, I mean, that's in Judeo-Christianity across the board, but we call it teshuva in Judaism. And it's an incredibly important tenet of our faith that you can make a mistake and come back from it. So cancel culture goes against anything that is faith-based at all. The idea being that you can't, you can't come back from your mistakes and from the things that you've done. And once you've been canceled, you are canceled. That is so antithetical to everything that I believe. And that is why the apology is not enough because they're not looking for you to become a better person. They're looking for you, control. they're looking for control and they're looking for a way for you to be out of the picture. Good. So moving on to something entirely different, I always love to know people's relationship stories because I love relationships and I love dating. <laughs> I mean, I hated dating, but I love talking about dating. I love love. I love love. So I'd love to know your relationship story. How did you and your husband meet? Yeah, so we actually met in Hollywood. Um, we met in the building that we lived in. There was like a little Halloween party and it wasn't a costume party. It was just like, come and meet. And I didn't have many friends. I'd been in LA, I think maybe six months at the time. I'd moved in the spring. So I was like, I guess I'm going to go. So I went and the building manager, the only person she introduced me to was Raphael. And I was like, that's random. And when I saw him, I, I wasn't even like, oh, this guy is really cute. Like I was so anti-dating at the time because I had just moved to LA. I was finally just happy, I, like doing my own thing. I joined a Bible study group. I found a good gym. Like I was just kind of walking with God and kind of focus on my mission of what I was doing in LA. And so when we met, I just remember us talking because we were the only ones who didn't drink. Neither of us drink. Like we might have a glass of wine once in a while, but we just don't drink. Yeah. So I was like, wow, so cool. I never meet guys who don't drink. And we were just chatting. And before he left, he was dealing with something with his old roommate. And I put my hand on his shoulder and I said, I'm going to pray for you. And he was kind of like taken back. And he, this is something that had been happening for weeks. And the next day I saw him and it got solved. And I, he like mentioned that I said that. And I was like, that's God. So I'm like, probably a good luck charm is mine. And I'm like, that's God. So we like kind of saw each other around the building. And then I was getting my nails. This is a long story. I'm trying to make it short. But I was getting I, my, I love, my nails I love done. Okay. 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 So I was getting my nails done um, in that same community room. And there was still a bowl of Halloween candy. So I see him come down to get, and I was like, do you not have groceries? Like, what are you doing? And he sat there and just talked to me the whole, like two hours. This girl was doing like a marble design on my nails. And <laughs> afterwards he was like, do you want to go eat? And he like showed me this cool Thai spot because I love Thai and he'd been in LA longer than me. So we were just kind of friends and I didn't really know he liked me for, we were friends for a couple of months and we would hang out like every day, but mm -hmm. 
I was just, I don't know. Like I wouldn't even send him emojis. I was so like focused on God and what I was doing. I just was afraid to let myself love anyone. Like I was just at the point where I'm like, I'm finally happy on my own. It's so scary to put you, like you get your power and you're like, Oh, I don't know. Cause then when you like someone and then you get hurt, it's just scary. So yeah. we were friends for a couple of months and then one day it just clicked and we were in, inseparable. Our relationship moved pretty fast. Um, and I'm very private about my relationship. Like we don't talk a whole lot and he's very outspoken. Like he has been a huge Trump supporter and he's an immigrant from Brazil. Mm -hmm. So he gets a lot of hate for that. Yeah. And he's just so vocal. Like he also inspires me because he just does not care. And yeah. he says things a little rough sometimes. And, you know, I would always get hate for it, but he just doesn't care. He doesn't care what anyone thinks. When he, like he'll say whatever, even if it offends you, like right. he'll just say anything. And if people hate on him, like yesterday, someone called him racist for saying Chinese virus. And he's like, it's from China. Like he just doesn't care. Like he's just <laughs> that kind of person. Yeah. And so that definitely inspired me too, because I was not fully there. I was just, you know, kind of a slave to public perception and opinion as you can be when you're on social media. Like you said, sometimes you want to be like, I don't know if I should say that. But why do we have to think that way? You know, why can't we just say what we want? And if we offend someone, you know, okay, you got offended, but I didn't mean it that way. But anyways, so we met in LA and then we moved to Nashville. We were we were in LA. I mean, I was there for four years, I think it was. And we moved yeah. to Nashville last year and he loves it. This is the first red state he's ever lived in. Oh my um, God. So it's been a whole new version of normal for him. He's like, LA wasn't normal, was it? And I'm like, no, it wasn't. Yeah. We have backyards here. There's nice roads. Everyone's nice, clean air, nature. I mean, we've just been loving it. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And I will say that my husband is similar in that he definitely drew out my confidence about being conservative because he never had any fear about talking about it. And that's a very refreshing and wonderful thing to have in a partner, I think. <laughs> So did you, I think, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. I would love to hear so what you're going to say. I remember when, you know, we started dating on Trump's inauguration, not on purpose. Like he wanted Trump to win. It's just a funny story. He wanted Trump to win. And I was like, yeah, cool. You know, I was raised conservative. Like, you know, I didn't really care much at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted Trump to win, but, you know, I wasn't following politics like I am now. Mm -hmm. And I remember just waiting, like, oh, like waiting for Trump to win. And then he was like, if Trump wins, you're going to be my girlfriend. Cause I kept telling him, no, I was just playing hard to get. And then obviously he did. And I was like, okay. Um, and it's funny because he started doing his own, like once Trump got into office he and we started seeing the media smearing him, he wanted to know why. So he, as an immigrant, he knows so much more about politics than a lot of people in this country, which is very sad. Yeah. And there, a lot of immigrants are like that. You know, you've seen how they see socialism and communism and they come from those countries and they're like, you guys need to wake up. And a lot of Americans are like, what are you talking about? That will never happen here, you know, because we've yeah. been here. Like we have, we have that privilege of having a free country. If you were born here and knowing it, I learned so much about immigration and other countries just through dating him that it opened my eyes to a whole new thing. But even watching his journey in politics, he had to do the research. He had to dig. And then I started digging more. And then we just started waking up to things that were happening in our government. And yeah, he's very bold. Yeah. I love it. That's amazing. I love it. And so do you have any dating or relationship advice for the followers I have who aren't married yet? Yeah, I mean, to what you said earlier, you know, I also have dated, I haven't dated a whole lot of people, but I have had that relationship where someone I thought was the epitome of a Christian man, and then ended up not quite being what he said he was. Yeah. And it was very hurtful because, you know, your first instinct is to be, okay, so is that God? And at the time when I went through this, I was like, that's not God. He was using God. You know, that's not the God that I know. Mm -hmm. But first and foremost, I'll say, if you are any faith or Christian and you're watching this and you want to date, not every guy that says he's a Christian will be a Christian. <laughs> you know, you can say you're anything. And that's hard because when you are vulnerable and you meet someone and everything seems nice, you think they wouldn't lie to me. You know, they said they love Jesus. It's not always that way. You have to guard your heart in every situation. Talk about in the Bible. You have to guard your heart. So I would say above all, guard your heart and definitely don't settle. I mean, don't settle for someone that doesn't have everything you want because life is too short and there are millions, billions of people. So I say definitely don't settle. I think social media can be so alienating. Like I remember thinking, how am I going to meet anyone? I work online. How am I ever going to meet someone? But God will make it happen in his timing. It will happen. And I think in the journey of when you're single, enjoy being with yourself. 
You know, I used to always think in my mind, I'm not running out of time to find a husband. I'm running out of time to be single. So I was running out of time to take care of myself, to just take myself out, get my nails. and like, just focus on me and my dog, not have, you know, having a relationship and then getting married. It's a whole nother chapter and you really have to die to yourself and, you know, compromise. Like you're, you're with another sinner now and you have to, you know, live as well thinking of someone else or when you're single, it's just you. So enjoy it. I think our, you have to date, you have to so fast. And it puts pressure on people, but God wrote your love story. Let him take care of it, you know, better yourself. I used to always ask myself, okay, if it's not now, like, what does God want me to do for me to prepare myself to be a wife? And now I think of that because I think that a lot of women put pressure on themselves that what's wrong with me? Why am I single? But it's not that. Just enjoy being with yourself. So the camera died, but we're back. And I was just going to respond to what you were saying about dating, which is that I think that the point about enjoying your time on your own is so important. And I think it is hard when you are geared towards having a family and wanting to have that beautiful marriage that you dream of. But being on your own is the best. I had the best time being single. Like, not like, not even when I was dating, just like enjoying being a single woman. I would go on day-long dates by myself, just going to my favorite restaurants and like- So underestimated. Yes, I mean, people think that you need company to go to a museum or even to go to a movie. And I loved going to those things by myself because I could take as much time as I wanted. I wasn't having to follow somebody else or feel pressured to like move on. I could just sit in front of the same painting for 20 minutes if I wanted. And I loved that. Yeah. I mean, it literally is so underrated because it's like you get to do, it's just you're living. I think the independence of it all too is you're doing your own thing. If I want to go to Home Goods and then maybe go to Chick-fil-A and then maybe go to maybe go to a museum. You can literally do whatever you want. No one's waiting for you. You can just do your thing. And I think that it's just so underestimated. I had some, even some of the times I was so sad because I'm like, where is my husband? Where is my husband? Some of those looking back were some of the best times where you're just doing your own thing. Yeah, no, it's definitely a mixture of emotions too. I think that's a very fair point of like, when am I going to meet the right person? And I think the anxiety more comes from when like it's not the idea that i need to be with someone right now it's like will i ever and that's the fear i feel like if everyone knew okay at whatever age you're gonna meet the person you're gonna marry people might be a little calmer you know to know that okay i'm gonna meet someone and i know it's gonna happen then and then you could just enjoy being single a little bit more but that's also not the way things work so <laughs> there'd be no need for faith right i always tell myself that if i knew how everything would turn out there'd be no need to faith which doesn't make it easier but I'm like okay I just gotta trust and have faith exactly so for the last question I have here as the resident beauty expert what are some of either you can tell me your favorite beauty products or favorite beauty tips or hacks or things that you love doing and you think that we should all know <laughs> sure I'll start with hacks because I love hacks one yeah. of my favorite beauty hacks is to use like some kind of hair gel or got to be hair gel through my brows. I didn't do it today, but like to, if you want that laminated look, especially you, like you have super full brows, it yeah. makes your brows look so feathered and so beautiful. I love it so much. Um, I got my brows laminated like a year and a half or so ago mm -hmm. and it damn it, like it wasn't good for my brows. So this gives you that like feathery full brow look even if you don't have full brows it just like they I don't know I have tutorials on it that I've done but I just love that I think it's so under underrated when it comes to beauty hacks also oils I love oils whether you're dry whether you're oily like oils are good for every skin type and mm -hmm. I always use a beauty oil usually that's my primer I don't usually use primers anymore I use beauty oils and like I'll put oils on my cheekbones as well like all over the skin and then I'll only set everywhere but here and then I don't even highlight anymore I'll just like let that be like the natural dewy oil like seeping through. Um, I love that. That's um, a great thing. What else? Yeah, I, beauty oils are so so good. I think that a lot of people overlook them, but beauty oils are just everything. Yeah. Um, also, if you're stressed, steamers. I love facial steamers, like the ones that have essential oil buckets. Mm -hmm. It just feels like a spa at home. I love I love just having like my own pamper routines and pamper days at home. Mm -hmm. um, beauty products, lip pencil. I feel like lip pencil is yes. so 
forgotten so a lot of times, creative. but once you do it, you can't stop. Even like I usually <laughs> just fill in my cupid's bow because I feel like it just makes my lips. I love that makeup can give you an illusion of things, right? You can enhance features on your face. And I, I've always loved that about makeup because it's like, I'm not doing all this makeup to just look exactly the same or else I would not put on any makeup. You know, it takes a lot of time, okay? I'm you know, <laughs> No one's trying to look the same when they put makeup on, okay? So I just love enhancing with lip pencil. I think it's so forgotten sometimes. I love lip pencil. I always have to do lip pencil. And um, I love lip products. Lip products are my thing. So I definitely say lip balm too. I yes. can't stand having dry lips. And I'll see people and like, you need to put lip balm like, it just makes your lipstick look so much better or lip so gloss true. or liquid lip or anything. But yeah, okay, those are some of my favorites. For brands, I'll wait for now because I'm not really sure which brands support conservatives right now. So I'm going to wait. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. And I will say that I have been using lip pencil more frequently. And in the makeup tutorial, I'm releasing, I don't know when this is coming out, but like I'll have released, that was the only, I used, <laughs> I used a lip, a lip uh, pencil and a, and a lip gloss. That was it. I didn't even use like a lipstick. Oh, so, good. So, so good. good. Yes. And for me who has like a very defined <laughs> upper lip, like it's very like I have an intense Cupid bow. I was like, it's nice to have this amount of control. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I can't wait yeah. to watch it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on my channel. This was amazing. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I mean, honestly, the work you're doing is so important. And I know I said this to you off camera and, and when we were just chatting, but don't ever let people discourage you. Like always stand up for your values. Never, who cares about numbers? Like they can do whatever they want with likes, dislikes, comments. You know, you can't, it, it can't move our values. And I know that, like you said, you get some haters. Don't ever let them make you think otherwise. You can always message me if, if they try. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're such a sweetheart. Everyone go and follow Amanda. Her handle on Instagram is just at Amanda Ensing, right? And I think it's also at Amanda Ensing on Twitter. It's on, well, I'm suspended for Twitter for nothing. Oh, so of they, course. They, they blocked me for nothing. We're apparently a makeup tutorial from 2016, which didn't exist. So oh. Twitter banned me on the day of CPAC because I tweeted a meme of Trump that said, miss me yet. So that's probably actually why, but they sent me a makeup tutorial of, of my face doing natural makeup. Who knows? Okay. Okay, Twitter. So <laughs> I'll link everything in the description box below. Make sure to follow Amanda absolutely everywhere. And I'm so excited that we had the opportunity to do this. And I look forward to hopefully at some point having you on again. Yeah, would love it. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments, so make sure to leave those below. Make sure to subscribe to Amanda Ensing absolutely everywhere. I will link all of her socials in the description box. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. To support me and my channel and to get exclusive content not available anywhere else, please head over to classicallyabby.substack.com. You can find me on social media absolutely everywhere at classicallyabby. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!